In this lesson, I want to go into more detail about the IP address structure. They're using that house analogy. If I look at a street address, for example, 13 Baker Street, to me as a human being, it's very easy to see that 13 is the house number and Baker Street is the road name. Then there'll be more to that. 13 Baker Street, London, and then a postal code. This is the same concept in IP. An IP address is actually made up of two components. There was a host address, like the house number, and a network address, like the street address. Now this is very important as for IP delivery, when I'm a client machine or a server, but when I'm talking IP to a machine, I will only directly deliver the packets to the target if that target is on my own local part of the network, known as a subnet. If the machine is not on my local subnet, I do not talk directly to it. Instead, I'm gonna send that traffic to something called a gateway, which will then talk to other gateways or the target and basically keep passing my traffic around. But let's stick to the idea of it being on the local subnet. How does a machine know if the target it wants to talk to is on the same local network, i.e. the same street? Remember, if it's the same street, then I would deliver the letter myself. If I'm at number two Baker Street, and I want to deliver a letter to 13 Baker Street, I'm quite happy to take the letter, walk down the road and deliver it myself. If my target was a different street, I'd say, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna put it in the post box. So how do we do that with an IP address? Now the first part of this is understanding that conversion of an IP address to binary. Remember it's 32 bits. What I see is some number, 10.7.173.52. But behind the scenes, that is all just ones and zeros. And if you remember, the calculator can be very useful to show us that. If I jump back over to the environment, if we restart calculator, make sure you're in programmer mode. And I can always just type in, if I'm in binary, I can type in the ones and zeros. If I'm in decimal, then I can just type in the number that I know. So if I know I'm 10 dot, well, 10 is the first part. So the binary is 0000, remember it's 8 bits, 1010. If another component is 173, I can just type in 173, and it shows me the binary for 173. So that's how I can convert between them. But how does it know which bit is the house number and which bit is the street, i.e. the host address and the network address? It's all based around something called the subnet mask. When you talk about IP, you'll often hear someone tell you, well, the IP address is 10.7.173.10, subnet mask 255.255.255.0. You may also hear it expressed as 10.7.173.10 slash 24. And what this is telling you is, what is the subnet mask? That 255.255.255, if you look at our example, the subnet mask says anywhere where it is a one, it means it's part of the network address. Where it's a zero, it isn't. It's the host address, i.e. the house number. So 255, 255, 255, remember 255 is the maximum for a byte, which means all eight bits are set to one. So we're saying the first part is all ones, and the second part, and the third part. If you see the slash 24, the CIDR format, that's telling you well, the first 24 bits is the subnet mask, i.e. 8, 16, 24. That is the same as 255, 255, 255. So it's saying those first three parts of the dotted quad, well, that's the subnet mask. So the first three parts, i.e. in this case 192.168.1, that is the network address. The parts where it's zero is the host address. So in this case, dot 13, that's the host part. So if I was this machine, if I was 192.168.1.13, and I was trying to talk to a machine that was 192.168.1.27, I could see that the network address is the same for both of us. The first three parts, because it's 255.255.255, first three segments of my address are both 192.168.1, i.e. our network addresses are the same, i.e. we're on the same network, so I can talk to it directly. If I was talking to a machine and its address was 192.168.5.27, then I would know that actually it's a different network 
I cannot talk to it directly. I would then go and talk to the gateway who would then get my packet to that machine. Now these are nice types of subnet mask. When it's a whole byte, it's very easy to read. I can very quickly tell this target is on the same network as myself, my machine will directly communicate. Now remember, this is not something we as human beings really care very much about. We are not sending these packets over the network. To a computer, this is very easy to work out. So it's really not a problem. It's just easy for us humans to quickly see, oh, well, this is the network. But there can be more complex combinations. With this example, where it's 255.255.255.0, that gives me really 254 addresses in that local subnet. It's probably less than that. I can't use the dot zero, that's the network identifier, and I can't use dot 255, that's really the broadcast. Also, one of those is going to be the gateway that I will communicate with that then talks to other networks. But let's just say we get around 250 usable IP addresses. What if I have a local subnet that I want more than 250? What if I want one that's smaller? So there can be more complicated subnet masks. I don't have to use a whole byte. I don't have to use 255. But in this case, you can see, I've actually got a subnet mask of 255.255.254. Now 254 is where the first seven bits are one, the last one is zero. If I went back to my calculator, if I did 254, you can see that is 1111111, zero. I.e. the first part is the subnet mask, i.e. the network address, but then the last bit and then the next eight bits are all part of the host address. This means the host addresses can actually be one through 511. I get the bigger network. Now the network address, in this case, if it's 192.168.2.0, 192.168.2 and 192.168.3 are the same network because this part could be zero or one, but it's still part of the same network because that bit is not part of the network address. So it's actually a bigger area. Now this is where it can get fairly complex. The good news is really you only care about this when you first set up the network. When I'm trying to decide what my networks need to be, I have to pick these, I design it. There are tools to help with this. There's a great site. This is a subnet calculator. And here it's actually showing me, well, hey, look, there's the 192168. If I change it to two, it's giving me the default subnet mask of 255.255.0. 24 bits, it's telling me the host range. I can make them smaller. If I change it to a class B, this will make more sense in a little bit, but I'll put it back to that value. And instead of it being 255.255.255, We'll select 255.255.254. Change that to 2 just to follow the example. You can see the host address range is 192.168.2.1 through 192.168.3.254. Notice it doesn't use the dot zero and it doesn't use the dot 255. When you're trying to work out your networks, you're trying to work out well, how big they should be, what ranges should I use, then use these tools. If you're using 255.255.255.0, it's easy. If I need to have bigger subnets, i.e. a bigger portion of my network that needs to be able to communicate directly, maybe I have a really big floor in my building that has more than 250 machines, but I want them to directly communicate, then I would probably have a 255.255.254. In that CIDR format, that would be slash 23. So use this, it will help you work out what the correct subnet mask should be, and it will help confirm what the address ranges are.